The human nervous system, overview and function. What is the nervous system? The nervous system is a complex network of cells and tissues that coordinate and control activities within the body. It is responsible for receiving information from the environment, processing that information, and orchestrating a response. The nervous system has two major components, central nervous system CNS, comprising the brain and spinal cord. The CNS acts as the control center, processing information and sending out commands. Peripheral nervous system PNS consists of sensory and motor neurons that connect the CNS to the rest of the body, including muscles, organs, and sensory receptors. What does the nervous system do? The nervous system is essential for sensing. It gathers information through sensory receptors, sight, sound, touch, etc. Processing. The brain interprets the information, deciding on appropriate responses. Responding. The nervous system initiates responses, whether through movement, glandular activity, or other bodily functions. Regulating involuntary processes, such as heartbeat, breathing, and digestion through the autonomic nervous system. Subdivisions of the nervous system. Somatic nervous system S and S controls voluntary movements and transmits sensory information. Autonomic nervous system ANS regulates involuntary body functions like heart rate, digestion, and respiration. The ANS has two parts: sympathetic nervous system. Activates fight or flight responses during stress or danger. Parasympathetic nervous system promotes rest and digest responses, calming the body. How does the nervous system work? The nervous system operates through neurons, specialized cells that transmit electrical and chemical signals throughout the body. Neurons. Neurons are the basic building blocks of the nervous system. They transmit signals via electrical impulses and chemical messengers called neurotransmitters. Sensory neurons receive signals from sensory receptors and send them to the CNS. Motor neurons carry signals from the CNS to muscles and glands. Interneurons found in the CNS. These neurons process information and determine responses. Synaptic transmission. Neurons communicate through synapses, tiny gaps between neurons, where neurotransmitters are released to carry the signal to the next neuron. Reflex arcs for rapid responses, such as pulling your hand away from a hot surface. The nervous system uses reflex arcs, where signals are processed through the spinal cord rather than the brain for faster reaction times. Manipulation through subconscious control, the Pavlovian method. What is Pavlovian conditioning? Pavlovian or classical conditioning is a method of learning in which a previously neutral stimulus becomes associated with a specific response through repeated pairing. This type of learning influences the subconscious part of the nervous system, which controls many involuntary and automatic behaviors. Ivan Pavlov, a Russian physiologist, discovered this principle in his experiments with dogs. He observed that dogs would salivate when presented with food and unconditioned stimulus. Pavlov then paired the presentation of food with a neutral stimulus, such as the sound of a bell. Over time, the dogs began to associate the bell with food, and would salivate upon hearing the bell alone. This learned behavior became known as classical conditioning. Mechanisms of Pavlovian conditioning: How it works. Pavlovian conditioning exploits the brain's ability to form associations between stimuli and automatic responses. Unconditioned stimulus (UCS), a stimulus that naturally triggers a response. For example, food causes salivation. Unconditioned response (UCR), the natural reaction to the UCS. For example, salivation in response to food. Conditioned stimulus (CS), a previously neutral stimulus that. After being paired with the UCS, triggers a response. For example, the bell. Conditioned response CR, the learned response to the CS. For example, salivation in response to the bell. This form of conditioning bypasses conscious thought and taps directly into the autonomic nervous system and subconscious processes, 
allowing for subtle manipulation of behavior, subconscious control, and manipulation. Humans, like Pavlov's dogs, can be conditioned through repetition and association. This subconscious conditioning is frequently exploited in various forms of manipulation, behavioral manipulation, advertising and media, by repeatedly associating a product with a positive emotional experience, for example, joy, love, success, advertisers condition people to feel good about the product and purchase it. People often make choices based on these subconscious associations, not on logical reasoning. Political messaging, political figures and media often associate certain symbols, sounds, or phrases with specific emotions or reactions. For example, fear can be conditioned by repeatedly pairing an idea or group with danger or negative outcomes, causing the population to automatically react with fear, even if the actual threat is minimal or non-existent. Fear conditioning and control, government and authority, the use of fear-based conditioning is common in situations of control. By repeatedly associating specific actions, ideas, or people with danger or punishment, governments can manipulate behavior and public perception. For example, in totalitarian regimes, constant propaganda associating dissent with punishment or social danger can lead to a population that instinctively fears challenging authority, even when not explicitly threatened. Terrorism and public reactions, terrorist attacks, or even the threat of terrorism, can be used as a conditioned stimulus that generates fear, often leading to a state of hypervigilance and acceptance of tighter controls by the government. Over time, populations may be conditioned to accept restrictions on their freedoms, for example increased surveillance, limited privacy in exchange for the promise of security, manipulation through reward and punishment, social conditioning, society can be conditioned to behave in certain ways through positive reinforcement, reward, and negative reinforcement punishment. For example, People may be conditioned to conform to certain norms or expectations by associating social approval a form of reward with specific behaviors, while disapproval or ostracization serves as a punishment for nonconformity. Long-term effects of Pavlovian manipulation. Prolonged exposure to classical conditioning can have profound effects on individuals and societies. Behavioral automatism people can develop automatic responses to certain stimuli, becoming less aware of why they make certain choices or hold specific beliefs. Cognitive dissonance, when people are conditioned to accept or perform behaviors that contradict their beliefs or values, they experience cognitive dissonance, leading them to rationalize or change their beliefs to align with their conditioned behavior. Increased susceptibility, Continuous conditioning makes individuals more susceptible to further manipulation, especially when reinforced by societal institutions, such as media, education, or government. Conclusion The human nervous system, with its capacity to subconsciously process and respond to stimuli, can be manipulated through Pavlovian conditioning to shape behaviors, beliefs, and reactions. By repetitively associating certain stimuli with rewards or punishments, people can be conditioned to react in specific ways, often without conscious awareness. This type of manipulation is employed in various forms, from consumer advertising and political propaganda to fear-based governmental control, allowing those in power to influence populations on a deep, subconscious level. Understanding the mechanisms of the nervous system and conditioning can provide insights into how control and manipulation can be exerted over individuals and societies.